On the survival show today, astronauts, vikings, little people, as well as vampires and of course zombies. As always, the home of survival news. I'm going to be covering everything from the big new game today. Occupy Mars is out on Steam, but is it any good? Judging by the early Steam reviews, maybe not. First look at V Rising's Gloomrot 3 expansion coming on the 17th. Smallland's first major update adding a plethora of new stuff. State of Decay 2 chugs along with a brand new update adding infestation and more horde mode, promising to make the game more tactical. And Tribes of Midgard finally makes right on a big fan request and in increasing how much you can build. It's all here, let's go, it's a survival show. It's kicking off with V Rising and the Gloom Rot expansion. It's going to be going live on the 17th of May, so only a week away, and the first proper gameplay trailer has been revealed. A whole host of improvements, multi layer castle building, 13 new bosses, as well as two brand new areas, and obviously a massive brand new zone. It looks like they're mixing in a little bit of steampunk or maybe a bit of industrialization into the mechanics of the game. A whole host of new mobs alongside them bosses, and a lot more traders that you can now sell stuff across the land, revamps and spruce ups to so many of the starting areas too. Improved magic, brand new spells, the school storm, seems like it's going to be utilising the power of lightning and thunder, two new weapon types with the great sword and dual pistols and they're now introducing legendary weapons. You'll also be able to craft jewels to channel your spells, modify them to however you want and build in a totally unique spell book. Honestly, there is so much to go for this update. Alongside it, there will be a paid DLC pack for cosmetics if you want to support extra, but the Gloom Rot expansion is going to be completely free. It's been a while coming, but this update clearly has been worth the wait, judging by the amount of content that's gone in it. And they've still got another two major updates by the looks of things before they leave early access. There was so much going on for me at the time, I never really got a chance to gel with V Rising, even though I'd covered and previewed it so much before its release. And while I'm still a bit iffy, because I do need a little bit of help with keyboard and mouse, as I suck, so I'm hoping that gamepad support is a bit more robust or is on its way, I think I might try and give it a shot if I've got time. Mars has to be one of the toughest locations to set a survival game. There's so many games that have been set there and they've pretty much all shrunk without trace. Can Occupy Mars break that? Probably not, judging by the early review scores. This game is one of them that's been perpetually in or on its way for a number of years. They've had various different demos and they've recently started or kickstarted a Kickstarter to give them some extra boost and funding. It doesn't look like it's gone well. Already huge complaints about the state of the game. Even for an early access title, more buggy than most. Only 38% of people so far out of 80 reviews recommend it. Day one can be tough, so it might improve, but yeah. There's no doubt about it, making a game is really tough. My limited time in helping out a game developer also try and make a game set on Mars really showed me that it's incredibly hard for small teams and indie developers. But you've got to have a core foundation and it looks like Occupy Mars at the moment is a bit lacking. Inherently immersive and simulation like is what you expect with a game like this. The players have been complaining that it's just clunky and it's just got really too much of an old school vibe with not enough going on. It could be to do with the planet, as I said so many other games have failed to try and set a compelling survival experience on Mars. The dusty red planet is just kind of too boring. I never want a crap on a game even before it's launched or when it just has, so hopefully they can turn it around and maybe this is just the start of some really, really disgruntled people that have been looking forward to it. We've already had an update to hotfix a bunch of issues and let's hope that they can get things back on track and keep showing people lots of updates to entice people to try it. It doesn't help though that the price of the game is fairly expensive compared to others around it. It's going to be £21 or $24 or so when it leaves its 10% early access discount. And for that price you could pick up V Rising, Core Keeper or a whole bunch of other games. It could probably have done with lowering its price a little bit just to see if it could attract some attention. The trailer looks jam packed of things to do and everything you would expect, maybe even more in terms of the simulation aspects but it just obviously hasn't grabbed people's attention in the early hours. Let me know what you think about the game and I'll keep my eyes on this and see if we can see any improvements. Hopefully maybe think about covering it in the future. 
State of Decay 2 launches its 33rd update. They're calling this Heart Attack, and it seems to be centered around the idea of more hordes appearing when you go or go close to trying to get hold of the play cards. A static item that is a core part of the game, but really a lot of players could avoid a lot of danger just by ignoring a lot of them. But that's not the case now. Spend enough time in the proximity, and you're going to be faced with deadly hordes that will now come and attack you. The devs are really talking up the idea that the game has become more immersive and you're going to need more strategy to survive in State of Decay 2. So deciding which of the play cards that you're going to take down, which ones present an opportunity maybe to lessen the zombies in and around, could be an important factor of the game. State of Decay is one of them games that slipped me by. I tried it on its release and obviously at the time it wasn't exactly setting the world alight. But I always wanted to dip back into it, so I'm keen to do that, and that place will be on my 100 Days channel. I'd love to do 100 Days of State of K2 and see what it's like in 2023. The hordes themselves look pretty intense. If a horde manages to be successful, it starts up an infestation, which will then mean even harder progress at trying to clear them out. If they manage to infest a location directly or close enough to your base, you could start seeing them attacking and sieging. Really does sound pretty interesting and cool, setting up almost tower defence or certainly having to worry a bit more about where the zombies are going to be and whether or not they're actually directly coming for you. As you would expect a whole ton of quality of life fixes and bug fixes as well, Heart Attack is available now across all of the platforms. Tribes of Midgard's Valhalla Saga update went live last month, adding brand new boss, new creatures, new items, mounts and more, but it didn't increase the build limit, something a lot of players have been asking for. Well that changes, as of yesterday they've increased it to 10 times what it was at launch, double the increase from their previous. So if you really want to build in survival mode, you've got the best time to go and do so now. It's definitely a game I want to put forward again from 100 days. Small Land is a game I think Ark and Conan fans should definitely check out. A lot of people compare it to Grounded, but it's certainly much more like the other games I mentioned. It's just had its first major update, adding a whole ton of new items, especially build with a whole brand new metal tier. I finished the stream today on my second channel, four hours showcasing all the brand new stuff, including being able to tame a hornet and ride it around finding two brand new NPCs. There's also got a whole bunch of new creatures. These are little spiderlings that are more like ticks that will basically try and suck your blood at all times. And you can get around the map a bit easier now with a catapult to fling yourself. It's got a really, really good vibe. The Giant's Fall Chapel and Crypt is part of the new area that you can explore. Expect a lot of difficulty trying to survive. I'll of course have a bunch more guides showing everything individually. But if you want to check up on all the new content, I managed to squeeze in every ounce of it in four and a half hours. Bearing in mind I have completed the game, absolutely. Every weapon, every armor piece. Small Land has shown great promise. It needs a little bit more for it to be really a great classic, but right now it is definitely a good survival game with lots of nice grinds that people expect. Fantastic base building that I rate highly. Just needs to improve the combat a little bit more. Let's go and check out the free update today. And it won't be too long before their next one's planned, as they've got a pretty robust roadmap that's been released in the last few months. Good stuff from Small Land, considering it only released a little while ago. And that's pretty much it for this one. Look out though, I've got a special recap video. Having been focusing on more core games lately, there's a whole ton of announcements and releases or info about upcoming survival games that you guys might not have heard. So I'm going to do a nice little recap, expect to see a future survival video coming soon, giving you the lowdown and the status of a lot of projects hopefully arriving. As always, the home of survival news, gameplay and guides, I'll see you rat bags for more.